Welcome to a guided loving kindness meditation. So, let me introduce myself. So, my name is Venerable Chunda, and I am a monk at Bodhiyana Monastery. So, I've been a monastic for close to 12 years. Yep. So, I've been with Ajahn Brown since when I was 23. Yeah. Well, that, that was probably about 20 years, 20 plus years ago. So I've been coming to the monastery for um, 11 years before I ordained as a monastic. So, uh, yeah, so about more than 12 years in the monastery. Mm -hmm. Yes, recently I was born in Malaysia and I migrated to Australia when I was quite young. I, I became a Buddhist when I was 23. And uh, after 11 years, I um, basically went forward and, and ordained as a monastic. So a quick introduction about um, who I am. Yep. I think I've been in the monastery for all these years. One thing I do really realize is Ajahn Brown is, is a very exceptional teacher in a way that he's well practiced, uh, have good meditation. But one thing I re realized being a monk and now been to many different monasteries to stay uh, and seen other teachers, uh, and I realized one thing with Ajahn Brown. Ajahn Brown has, has got a lot of loving kindness towards a lot of his monastic um, and his students and towards everyone in general. Uh, so Ajahn Brown does have a lot of loving kindness, uh, and that will show in the monastery. What I mean by that is I've been to many different monasteries and I find that sometimes when you go to other monasteries you can, you can tell how the monastery is run by the monastic and the teachers there. But some monastery is very strict, some monastery is a bit, bit too controlling. Yeah? And uh, then sometimes when I go and visit the monastery I notice the monastic there and people are a bit uptight and a bit tense. And you, you tend to feel everything is not as peaceful, calm, and serene. And you can feel the, the, um, the environment or the, um, the feel of the, of, the, of the Sangha or the community there. When, every time I come back to Bodhiyana Monastery, I always notice that there's a lot of loving kindness in the monastery. And because Ajahn Brown is, is our teacher, and he's, he's been teaching us for so long. Uh, and one of his main practices uh, and is loving kindness. And the way that he speaks to his um, monastic monks and nuns and also his lay supporter, uh, it's always a lot of kindness and friendliness. Uh, so yes, so that's why when, when the, I was asked to do a guided meditation, and that came to my mind. So yeah, so Ajahn Brown does practice a lot of loving kindness. And I think that's one reason why this monastery, there's so many monastic and lay people coming here every single year to stay, to practice, and to ordain. Because I have go to some monastery where it's a bit too controlling, or too strict. You tend not to have a big community compared to the Yana monastery. In saying that, um, the, the Buddha did say yeah, there is eleven benefit la, of loving kindness when one is practiced well. La. So these are the uh, are the eleven benefit. La. One will sleep easily. Yeah? Yep, that is very true. I find that if I do practice a loving a lot of loving kindness, uh, that I can sleep very easily yeah? without worry or concern. And one wake up at ease. Uh, so um, when you have sleep with a heart of metal, when you wake up, you wake up very peacefully. Yeah? And one does not have evil dreams. So when you practice a lot of loving kindness, you find that when you sleep, you can sleep peacefully and you have very nice dreams. And some of the nice dreams I have was when I dreamt I was flying through the sky. So it's quite a very peaceful dream. And one is dear to human being. And yes, it's true. When you have a lot of kindness towards other people, then you see other people are always attracted to oneself. So I do notice with Ajahn Brown, it does have a lot of loving kindness towards everyone in the community. One is 
dear to non-human being. Um, yeah, so I guess that means like animals, especially in the monastery. So myself, I've been staying in the monastery for um, quite a long time. And I noticed the, um, the kangaroos, when they see a monk or a human being, uh, they do not run away. Yeah? Even the birds will come very close uh, and sometimes try and steal food off, off the monk's bowl. Uh. <laughs> yes. When I went to help support a monastery in Victoria, uh, it's quite a new monastery, I noticed when I was there first time, uh, I, I used to see the kangaroos. Uh, as soon as they see a human being, they just run away really quickly. Yeah? But as the monastery get developed after a few years, I noticed the, animal, the kangaroos just stand around and just watch us. Uh, we are having a fright, so when you have a lot of loving kindness, ten, ten, you see the animals that are not scattered into the forest. Mm -hmm. And one is protected by devas. Ah, okay, that's interesting too. Um, yeah, so one thing I noticed in the monastery, when you first come and stay, and you stay here long enough, you notice a lot of really interesting things do happen from um, what I heard from lay people that stays here, they, they do notice a lot of um, interesting things happening uh, in the monastery. Uh, things like seeing really, really bright um, objects at night. Uh, and sometimes if, if a lay person asks me what was that, uh, I say, oh, I ask them, how bright is it? And they say, it's really, really bright. I say, oh, okay. Must be a um, heavenly being that's come and visit the monastery. Uh, and sometimes when we need things, uh, we always think about, oh, we need this, oh, hmm. And for some reason, sometimes the, the things that we need uh, will just come uh, the, next, the next week or so. Uh. So I believe that we have two types of supporters, human and non-human, or higher, higher beings, uh, or Buddhists that are born in higher places. Uh. Yes. And none is not um, harmed by fire, poison, near weapons can touch that person. Uh. I go, hmm, that's interesting. Uh, I'm not sure about fire uh, or weapon, uh, but with poison, yes, I think that is possible. Uh, because one time I went to India, I got food poisoning. Uh, and um, yeah, and, and when you have a lot of loving kindness uh, towards yourself uh, and towards the surrounding, uh, then you tend to recover uh, a lot faster. Uh, and we also, we, the monks go down to teach at the Armadale meditation class when there is um, people that is recommended by a doctor. Le. So if we um, teach the, our meditators how to um, let go and let go a lot of kindness and acceptance and loving kindness, then they tend to recover le, more rapidly yeah, than people that do not attend the meditation class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's one thing I notice. And once mind gain concentration easily. Yeah. So what that means is, and if you do do a lot of loving kindness meditation, then the mind can be calm and serene yeah, quite easily. Yeah. Yeah. So it does lead to um, a deeper meditation. Yeah. And uh, in the deeper stage of meditation, yeah, we, 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 we call samadhi, we say when you go into deep meditation, yeah, sometimes the mind, there's a light that, that arises in the mind yeah, and the, it's a pure white, bright, radiant light here. Yeah. And people that have a lot of loving kindness uh, tend to have um, this radiant mind uh, in deep meditation. So we call that the, um, the um, method limiter. Uh. So that can be developed uh, by uh, a, a yogi practitioner. Uh. And that's one thing I noticed with a lot of um, practitioners, those who have a lot of loving kindness uh, can actually develop deep samadhi easily. Uh. And once um, face become serene and bright. Le. So if you have a lot of loving kindness in one's heart, le, then one's face becomes serene le, and uh, bright quite easily. Le. And once die without confusion. Le. So a person that have loving kindness le, um, is not worried le, or have a lot of anxiety or depression. Le. And um, when the person pass away, he pass away with a lot of matter in his heart. Le. So one thing I noticed, because as a monastic, we go to see a lot of um, old supporters that are getting old, and uh, actually the body is breaking down, uh, and they are basically um, yeah in the, in the last stage of their life. Uh, I notice sometimes um, 
Uh, some are very old supporters uh, that have been practicing all their life. Uh, they have a lot of loving kindness. Uh, so when they do um, get old, get sick uh, and pass away, uh, they, they pass away with a lot of peace uh, and acceptance. Uh, yeah, they, they see the, the aging process, uh, it's, just, it's just a process. And with understanding, this is, we all die and we all have to depart from this body and we all move away and get reborn in the next life. Uh, so uh, yeah, so one die without confusion, and and one may get may develop and penetrate the higher stage of awakening. If not, that person can be reborn in the Brahma world. So if someone develop a lot of loving kindness, have a pure heart, then that person may get reborn in the higher planes. So become a heavy heavenly beings. So these are the 11 benefits of practicing loving kindness. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, that's, that's quite true. Sometimes well, the more I practice loving kindness, the more I see other, other people practice. And especially how Ajahn Brown practice, I realize all these 11 benefits are true. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So this is a um, quick introduction on uh, loving kindness meditation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's quite interesting. I think metta is something that is not often talked about. But when it's um, practiced well, it does lead to very good result. Yep. Because sometimes if, if you practice, just practice samadhi meditation, it can be a bit dull. Sometimes it requires a bit of loving kindness to develop in one's heart. Because when you develop loving kindness, it brings a lot of um, joy, happiness, peace, and also non-regret, and um, freedom. Because when you're kind to other people, you're kind to your oneself. And when you learn to forgive other people, then also you learn to forgive yourself too. So it works both ways. So all that can be developed with loving kindness. When you develop loving kindness, when you see someone's faults, when you see someone did something wrong, sometimes you just develop friendliness and forgiveness and you accept people for who they are. Mm. So that's one thing I noticed a lot with Ashwin Brown because he has a lot of loving kindness. He can really put up with, with some, of, some of the um, monks and the way that we behave. And there is always, there's always a lot of kindness by Ashwin Brown. I've been here for 12 years uh, and um, yeah, I noticed the monks do a lot of sometimes unskillful things, silly things. Even myself, I do a lot of silly things too. Uh, but I always notice Ajahn Brown is always very kind uh, and very forgiving, uh, no matter what, what we do uh, in the monastery. Uh. Yes, so it's, it's a great living example uh, to see someone that's practicing loving kindness well. Uh. And myself, I do practice loving kindness. Uh, these days, uh, when I find that I do get, if I get angry, frustrated, or quite negative, uh, then I have to do more loving kindness. And um, and when I do more loving kindness and develop more loving kindness, then I find my meditation do well, and uh, all those eleven benefits uh, will slowly become more more apparent. Uh, things like sleeping easily, waking up with ease, uh, having nice dreams. And um, yeah, then um, people, human and non-human, are more attracted uh, to those that practice loving kindness. Uh, yep. And um, things like um, things like anger, sickness, um, body pain, uh, with loving kindness, it, it does not it disappear. Yep. Especially when when you, when you're sick and you're unwell, uh, and when you practice loving kindness, uh, you, you tend to uh, accept the sickness, uh, then tend to recover more rapidly. Uh. Mm -hmm. yes. why, why I say that is because when I, before I was a Buddhist, uh, I used to have a lot of anger, uh, and I um, was a quite angry person, uh, and a very negative person, uh, to the point where uh, my friends would call him Mr. Grumpy uh, or Mr. Negative. Uh, and when I, one of the first things I practiced uh, was loving kindness uh, before I practiced meditation. Uh, and uh, yeah, man, my friends and my family saw the result uh, that I become a more relaxed, more peaceful, and more happier person. Uh, so loving kindness was one of my first um, practice that I did uh, 
when I first came across Buddhism, it wasn't meditation first, it was actually loving kindness. Because that's what I needed uh, when I was younger. Uh, because I was just feeding on too much negativity with the world uh, and with other people, uh, with my friends, and sometimes we, even with families too. Uh, so I realized that I need to be more happier uh, and develop loving kindness. Uh. So loving kindness is a wonderful practice. Uh. Okay, so we can um, yeah, just start with the uh, loving-kindness guided meditation. Yeah. Okay, so first we start off with sitting constantly. Let's relax. Relax your body. And gently close your eye. And take three deep breaths. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in peace, breathe out, relax. And breathe naturally. With your awareness in front of your face, we always start to do a quick body scanning. We make peace with our face, relax our face. Relax. Be kind. Be kind to our face. Make peace with our face. Now we gently bring awareness to our upper body. We make peace with our upper body. We be kind to our upper body. And we relax. Now we gently bring our awareness to our arms. We make peace with our arms. Relax our arms with kindness. Now we bring awareness to our hands. Relax our hands. Make peace with our hand. Let it go with kindness. Now we bring awareness to our upper back. We relax our upper back. Make peace with our upper back. Let go with a lot of kindness. Now we bring awareness to our tummy. Make peace with our tummy and relax and let it go with kindness. Now, we gently bring awareness to our lower back, where we're sitting, on the chair, on the cushion, or leaning against the wall. We make peace with our lower back and let go of it. Relax with a lot of kindness. Now, we bring awareness to our legs our right and left legs. Relax. Our left and right legs. Make peace. And let go with a lot of kindness. Relax our legs. Now we gently bring awareness to our feet. We let go. And relax our feet with a lot of loving kindness especially our feet that's been working so hard in the morning into the evening. Relax our feet. Now we gently bring awareness to our chest and relax our chest. Gently breathing in and breathing out softly. 
with a lot of kindness and relax. We are awareness in our heart. Our heart is a feeling part. We feel happiness, joy, peace, freedom within our heart. Our mind is a thinking part. We think of loving kindness towards all beings, to our family, to our friends, to our dear friends, to our dear families, towards our parents, our mom, our dad, our sisters and our brothers, and all our close family members, our uncles, our aunties, our cousins, and especially to our spiritual teachers, especially Ajahn Brown, has been working so hard for so many years, supporting the monks, the nuns, and all Buddhist supporters, Buddhist lay supporters. With gratitude and loving kindness, especially towards Ashen Brown. Gratitude, respect, and honor. Worldly of respect, the highest respect. towards our teacher. They have been very kind and very supportive towards all Sangha members in Bodhiyana Monastery, in Dhammasaranath Monastery, and in all the other branch monasteries. Matter, loving kindness, is a feeling. First, it starts out with a thought. When you think about it, gratitude, kindness, respect, friendliness to all beings, you generate that goodwill towards all beings in one's mind. Then it becomes a feeling the feeling of kindness, friendliness, loving kindness to everyone, especially our close friends, family members, and our spiritual teacher. Once matter, loving kindness is generated in one's, one's heart, you feel the warmth, the peace, the happiness, and the gratitude within one's heart. One's good quality, one's good deeds. the goodness in one's heart, the goodness in sharing, giving, serving other people, wishing everyone's happiness, peace, freedom, freedom from pain, freedom from suffering, wishing all beings happiness, peace, Enjoy.
time to time is good to bring up the feeling of loving kindness towards all beings, especially in this moment of uncertainty, wishing everyone, may all beings be happy, may all beings be free from danger, may they be happy in their heart, may they, may they have what they need, food, shelter, medicine, and safety. May they not live in fear and danger. May all beings happy and well. And also, it's also good to have loving kindness to oneself. May I be happy and well. May I be free from danger, worry, anxiety. May I be free from sickness, pain, despair. May I have abide in the mind of happiness, joy, peace, and freedom. May all beings be well and happy. May our parents, our brothers, our family members, our friends, our spiritual teachers be happy, well. May I abide in peace, happiness and freedom. Free from danger, worry and despair. May I abide in peace, happiness, joy, freedom. May I have a nice abiding in loving kindness. May I have a heart of matter towards all beings and to especially towards oneself. Once you have generated a heart of loving kindness and matter in one's heart, then you can share it towards all beings, to our family members, to our parents, to our mother, to our father, to our brothers, to our sisters, to our dear friends and especially to our dear spiritual teachers, especially Ashen Brown. We wish him happiness, joy, long life, peace and freedom. In his 70 years, happy birthday. May our dear teacher Ashen Brown have a wonderful 70 years birthday.
the benefit of loving kind of meditation is once you generate it, kindness, peace, and freedom, and joy in one's heart, then you can share it with a lot of people. Those that are dear, close by. Those, those who are gentle and friendly, and also with our enemies, those who are angry and hostile. Metta is a very powerful practice. When you share loving kindness with other people, all beings will pick up in that kindness.
Okay, so we'll finish off on the meditation after the tree gong. Okay, so gently come out of your meditation. Yeah, and keep the warmth, joyful, kind, friendly feelings in one, one's heart. The good thing about mental meditation is once it's developed and, and cultivated in one's heart, then the mind can be quite at ease and relaxed and serene. So even if there's conflict within the community here and there's argument or discontent, the mind doesn't have to be drawn into problems. The mind can always abide in that kindness towards all beings, towards other people that's hostile or other people that are not at peace. Sometimes we can't solve other people's problem, but what we can do is we can always send loving kindness and compassion to all beings. Mm. Yeah. So once you have matter, then you find that no matter where you go, you always have a friendly heart. So you can go to any places, visit anywhere, visit any monastery, go to any places where people are hostile. And uh, when you have loving kindness to all beings, uh, people will pick up and they feel, they don't feel afraid. Uh, they feel drawn to, um, to your kindness uh, and compassion. Mm. There's one time I find that when I go to a new place and um, people might act tough, people might act, um, might want to take advantage of one another. Uh, but if you're always kind, then later on you win, you win the trust of other people. Then you become a very trustful person and a very genuine person. Because with loving kindness, you tend to draw, you draw a lot of people together. And people feel safe and quite at ease and protected if you develop loving kindness. So that's one thing I realized in Bodhiyana Monastery. Ajahn Brown have a lot of loving kindness and forgiveness to all monastic and including lay people. So yeah, so a lot of people they can feel that and they'll pick pick up on that in one's heart. And with loving kindness, people change. People will change because we all human beings. We are trying our best. So if we try our best and uh, we forgive one another, then people will, will um, pick up on that kindness uh, and people will always improve because when we are too strict to people, people will just, on, just want to avoid, avoid that person. But if you're kind and friendly uh, towards one another, uh, then people will feel, will feel the kindness uh, and will not do anything uh, that's hurtful uh, or aggressive. Uh, so loving kindness is, is a very powerful practice. So I, I've, been, I've been a monk for over 12 years now. And I've seen when there's a lot of loving kindness in the community, the whole place become very peaceful and at ease. People are a lot more happier and more peaceful. And when people are happier and peaceful, then people will not be afraid and they will keep the precept, not out of fear, and their mind will incline towards peace and happiness more easily, to develop a more positive mind. Because when it's too aggressive, and there's too much anger, then people will develop negative, critical thinking. But when you develop a lot of loving kindness, then you, you develop the wholesome state, the positive thinking, so if one's practice, if the tea farmers are increasing, 
then you should look, go and look for a place uh, where if, if, if your tea farmers is not increasing, but your wholesome qualities are increasing. Yeah. Mm. So one time, Ananda, they asked the Buddha, what, um, associating with good calamita, is it um, part of the, the holy life? Uh, and the Buddha told Ananda, no, it's the whole of the holy life uh, to associate with good calamita. Uh, so good people uh, in monastic life, uh, also same with uh, good um, lay people in, mena in, in practicing Buddhism. Uh, so Ashim Brown is a good calamita uh, teacher. Uh, and he does have a lot of heart, strong, a lot of loving kindness uh, towards all beings. Uh, so you see the result. Uh, there's so many monks at the monastery uh, and the Sangha is growing. Uh, so loving kindness is a very pow powerful practice. Uh. So please continue on and develop deeper, deeper matter in one's heart. Uh, so it becomes a part of one's practice. Uh, and it becomes a part of one's meditation. Then you have nice dreams, you dreams of you can dream of nice places, happy dreams, dream of flying. And some in some cases uh, I noticed with um, um, practitioners that have the, the strongest um, loving kindness, uh, then they might become serene, calm and radiant easily. Uh. So it's like the mind is really radiant and bright, yeah. Yeah. And that's true loving kindness meditation. Okay, thank you. Thanks for your time.